You're watching Fresh, your favorite Pacific youth show for the people, by the people. From the north to the south, the east to the west, we stay on fleek. You know, I, I, I knew I wanted to do this, and I guess I was willing to, to lose the weight to do it. So I ended up losing about, yeah, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 odd kilos. Oh, no. What are some ways that you keep calm in stressful situations? So what I like to do is just like go for runs or something. Really? Um, it doesn't look like it. Hello everyone, I'm Pilecki Oli from Flexmere. We're here at Trilogy Barber Expo at Western Springs. Let's have a look. So Trilogy Barber, there's three styles um, in New Zealand barbering. This is the brand that we're trying to promote to the world. Um, so I'm urban side of barbering, um, Trilogy. Uh, there's also traditional and there's uh, contemporary, which is the new flavor. How I got into barbering was one of my good friends, uh, Māori, Māori brother from Huntley, he um, gave me a haircut and then I gave him a haircut. So he taught me how to cut hair just on the spot. Uh, I enjoyed it and made, making people look good made me feel good in a way. So that's the passion that grew from a hobby. So myself, I'm speaking from a Pacifica lens, um, being Samoan. We can watch someone do something and then mimic, and then we become quite natural at doing that, at copying. So a holistic approach to our education is where we find um, our people can relate to really well. Um, we've got amazing, amazing talented people here in Aotearoa, and we want to just give them a, a platform where they can come and learn and then showcase their skills and build a brand from that. So. I like the quote that Bear says, he says, you can't compete against me because I want you to win as well. So that's what this is about, is building a platform for you to come in and make a name for yourself and learn from some of the best in the country. This is the first expo event in the barbering industry uh, since COVID. And so it's bringing barbers back together. And, you know, we're not competing against each other, but to help inspire each other. You know, there's enough heads for all of us to cut. And so you are as good as it's going to get for a lot of our men who are struggling silently behind closed doors, losing jobs, or even broken relationships. You know, us as the barber may be their safe space, maybe their help that a lot of our tiny need. And so this event has been amazing. Barbering's a grind. Um, so it might look glamorous to the young kids out there at the moment because we're posting on social media, all these kind of things, but we're only posting the highlight reel. We're not posting that we spend most of the, most of the day sweeping the floor, um, taking on other people's problems. Um, sometimes we take them home with us where maybe we shouldn't, so it, it, it can wear you out. So when I brought the idea up to JB and Paletti, I I've been to experts around the world and I didn't see enough representation of Pacific Islanders. So I felt it was important that we would take the stage as Pacific Islanders in this industry and take up the space here. The message that we want to bring forth to our community is that we're just as good as any other barbers around the world and it's time to highlight and put ourselves on stage and really excel in that space. So we have a plan and that this is the starting of something that we want to create annually. And, and again, the message is always going to be the same, is to highlight people that look like us on stage and really um, expose their talents um, and their knowledge to, to the wider community. And that's us team. Thanks for coming along. Keep it fresh.
I always enjoyed my food a bit too much and it got the better of me and I started packing on the weight and not enjoying my rugby, I guess, as much. So uh, I've relied a lot on, on natural talent to get me through. My name's Levi Amor. I'm from Samoa, Fiji. I play for the Mono Pacifica. This is me, YGB, Young, Gifted and Brown. I was born in Auckland, out west in uh, Te Aratu. Raised there until I was about 10, then moved to Australia and did most of my schooling over there. I came back to New Zealand to further my career with the Tasman Mako. And from there on, uh, I got selected into the Chiefs squad for the 2018 and further on into the Blues for 2019. Not long after that, I took my career overseas to Japan and I played for Toyota Shoki and Hino, which really uh, helped excel my career. And with Moana team being created, I just thought uh, this, this is my, my opportunity to, to do what I love and also represent my, where I come from. I'm definitely proud to put on the jersey and represent the, the Pacific. I always enjoyed my food a bit too much and it got the better of me. And I started packing on the weight and not enjoying my rugby, I guess, as much. So uh, I've relied a lot on, on natural talent to get me through and then uh, it, it sort of hit me. I kept getting setbacks and, you know, kept thinking I, I didn't want to um, blame it on the food or that I was too heavy. It wasn't until I, I came back from Japan uh, last year, really had a, had, a, had a good think whether, you know, did I really want to play rugby and, and was I willing to sacrifice what, you know, I really loved, which was food. I knew I had one shot left, you know, sort of make it or break it opportunity. So, you know, I, I, I knew I wanted to do this and. I guess I was willing to, to lose the weight to do it. So I ended up losing about, yeah, 30, 30, 30, 30 odd kilos. Performing a lot better and just a lot happier, I guess, uh, mentally and physically. I always got told, you know, you lose your weight, you get into, into good shape and, and the sky was the limit. Definitely with the Moana team, it's like being in the family with part of the Ainga. You know, a lot of um, Tongans, um, Samoans, a few Fijians and um, boys from Niue, Cook Island, so you know, we do local every day. We pray, we get together, we learn about each other's cultures and languages. Bit of a joking team as well. Uh, you know, these guys are like brothers already, so um, everything we do, we, 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 we think, with, think of our, our ancestors that come before us. That was me, YGB. Catch you later. Mother. And welcome back to us, Dobby and Gap. Dobby. Where's Dobby? <laughs> no one to tell us no or where to go. That's the wrong lyrics. Sweet, all right. Namaste. And welcome back to us, Dobby and Gap. Today, we're going to be talking about conflict resolution. Acknowledge that yoga comes from the northern part of India and it derives from um, spiritual practices of the religion of Hinduism. And today we're just going to be learning the basics. Can we meditate first? Can we meditate first? Oh yeah, okay, let's meditate. Okay. <clears throat> What's meditation to you, Dom? I'm, I'm gonna find it. Close your eyes. Mulada the chara takara is the source of all energy available to Don't, 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 you're gonna offend people. Put it down. Okay. It's proper, I'm reading. Close your eyes, close your mouth. My gosh. In through the nose. Out through your mouth. Are you feeling relaxed and refreshed? Very relaxed. Okay. Thank you for that. What are some ways that you keep calm in stressful situations? So what I like to do is just like go for runs or something. Really? Um, it doesn't look like it. Anyways, and we're going to do yeah. a child's pose. So pretty much you go on your knees. It's really easy. And you're just gonna like put your arms out in front of you and you're gonna go like that and just stretch. Doesn't this feel peaceful? Not really, it hurts. Has there ever been an argument that you've had and mm -hmm. then you've kept that grudge? Like you guys, you yeah. still haven't got over it today? Every argument I've had in the past, I've held on to it. That's why I need to do yoga. For example, all the arguments that I have with my siblings, I hold yeah. on to it and I punish them. 
I have two sisters, right? And they always wear my freaking clothes. Oi, that's like me. They always wear my clothes, my siblings. And then when I ask them where they are, then they're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. So then I smack them. Let's just lie here and breathe. That's yoga. Shut up. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. <laughs> this is supposed to be peaceful. You give me a headache. What about you, Gabby? Have you ever been in a fight? Like a physical fight? Yeah. Ah. He's just not, he's just gonna die. Get lost, dude. <laughs> Got that yummy. This is the cow. Oh. Sorry, just <laughs> what is the stupidest thing you've ever got gotten into a fight over? I didn't pass toilet paper to um, this guy. Mm -hmm. I, uh, under the cubicles. Yeah. He's like, Chi, can I have some toilet paper? There's no toilet paper here. And he reached his hand under, but I didn't give him anything. I just, like, went like that to it. And then but all I hear is, <laughs> was this on a public toilet? Nah, nah, I was at school. I think I was like year seven, mm. and this little kid, I was like, I want some toilet paper! <laughs> and then he kicked down my door. Yo, he only had his undies on, his pants were still down. <laughs> but I was like, hey, you stink bum! And then I was just sitting at the toilet, like, ah! giving him toilet paper. Do you condone fighting? No. When you need to protect yourself, however, you protect yourself and you protect the ones that you love. OK. But only use it as a last resort. Okay. Always try and find an alternative way out of a situation. Mm. OK? Amen. Call the police. That's what the police are there for. Mm. That's us for this week on Ask Dom and Gabby. Gabby and Dom. Tune in next week as we will have more questions from you guys to answer. Keep, Keep it fresh. fresh. A whole new world. A dazzling place find that I never Aladdin. knew. <laughs> what? 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 We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> <laughs> Um, us talking about, you know, Black Lives Matter movement and then you get your actual, your own people saying, oh, that's America, we're not black. Mm. But it's, it's not about that. It's, it's the fact that it's, it's two different things. It is definitely apples and oranges, but we're not really different because there's so many overlaps between us and our experiences with black people. Come to Māori and Ding Dong, honeys. Your resident loudmouths are here. No whispering in this house, because if you've got something to say, you better say it with your chest. This generation is championing so many social causes, I lose count. But can you count yourself as part of a movement, whether it be climate change or human rights, if you're not moving at all? Your message might get out fast, but will the message stick from streets to tweets? My question to our panelists today, is online activism real activism? Benji, what are your thoughts? Um, I think, you know, online activism, we, we all live in the digital age at the moment, right? Especially given, like, the last two years, you know, we've been in COVID. And so we need to figure out ways and how we can elevate the voices of the unheard. We have our phones like cigarette packets, and so we can use that as a tool to elevate those voices and create social change. I mean, there's been so many movements that have started from a digital platform. I think it's a, it's a good tool, but obviously, you know, very nuanced the way that we um, tackle activism online. And Sylvia, what are your thoughts? Is resharing an Instagram post enough to say that you're an activist? I think that's one small thing that you can do, but if that's all you're doing, then you're not doing enough. 
the working poor are time poor. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are working nights, working overtime, like my aunties and uncles, you know, the people that raised us, that allowed us to be able to have this vocabulary and access to education to talk about these things. So sometimes a reshi is all that they can do, but the people that I think we should be critiquing in their activism are those with the resources and the money and those with the time and the following. Yeah, just on that, what I don't like is our own youth calling out our elders, disagreeing with their opinions and assuming that our elders will have opinions on certain issues. Mm. Young people complain and they say, well, you know, we have all these social issues because of generations before us. Well, you know, most of our elders did not go to university, mm. did not have access to the internet, still cannot use it now. So I think we've got to recognise our privilege as young people that we have all the tools in front of us to understand and unleash potential in solving these problems. Yeah, definitely. And then yeah. just off that, even the nuance within being young as yeah. well. So us being young people, I think us being the young um, and the brown and the loud, making sure that we also check our voices too, that we're not louder than anyone else who's more impacted and mm -hmm. more marginalised than we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like speaking on behalf. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. want to speak beside people and yeah. with them and um, through like talano and understanding. All right, let's take our minds back to 2020. The murder of an black man, George Floyd in America. There was this trend of posting a black Instagram tile uh, with the hashtag BLM and uh, went gangbusters. What are your thoughts on that? I, th I think when it first came up, I was like, this is great. Like we're getting everybody aware of like what's happening. I saw like profiles that I just never thought in a thousand years would even think about Black Lives Matter. And I think it was to do with the trend, right? It was trending at the time. Yeah. And and I think, you know, showing your solidarity for it in that day was 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 great. With the implication that there was going to be changes in your own life and how you will respond to the things that are happening in America. But as expected, it was just the black tile that was there on everyone's timeline for the day. I think that was about it. And that's all I saw from a lot of people. It's funny because I'm sure you guys have heard it a lot, but you know, you get um, us talking about, you know, Black Lives Matter movement, and then you get your actual, your own people saying, oh, that's America, we're not black. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not about that. It's it's the fact that it's, it's two different things. It is definitely apples and oranges, but we're not really different because there's so many overlaps yeah. between us and our experiences with black people. All right, Tave, with things like Black Lives Matter showing your support on social media, after the hype dies down, how can we make real action in trying to address these problems in our own individual way? There's so many different things we can do, but the first thing that comes to mind is self-examination. Yeah. Anti-blackness in the Pacific community is rife, um, and that's something we need to not ignore. We just need to look at um, the wording, merely black thing. Um, in reference to people who are darker and people who are brown within our own community. And that's on us. You post up, but then you've got to think, what am I doing to perpetuate these power structures? Activism can start in your home, changing the hearts and minds of your family members and having those courageous conversations in your home if you're safe enough to do so. I've had conversations with my brother around not using the term gay as a slur and unpacking why that's a problem. The onus of that shouldn't be on the members of my family who are part of the LGBTQIA plus community to do it because it's not safe for them to have those conversations. So starting in the home, but there's also, um, if you've got the space and education and access, you know, impacting legislation and making petitions and looking at the law, and that's what, you know, Benji and, you know, others have done with petitions. That's such important work as well. But I think wherever you are, you can constantly look at self-betterment and learning more and also being open to being called out. I think that's a big yeah. thing. If you're going to post up, you better be ready to be called out. And I'm open to being called out. You know, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Why am I wrong? Like, constructive criticism is so important, but it's, we've got to be careful not to let that turn into cancel culture mm. because we can't cancel people for not knowing what they don't know, mm. you know? Look at yourself, what are you doing? How are you benefiting? Change up your ways and also see what you can do in your community, grassroots and also systemic. <laughs>
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Catch you next week. Come back next week for more freshness. Enjoy your weekend and always remember to keep it fresh. Beauty. Oh, coming on standby. We are here at the Pacific Fusion Fashion Show. Keep it fresh. Uh, there's no other show like this in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, well, no, there is, but this one's better. Come on. Bring your